So I'm talking about Gutenberg, GraphQL, and government. Anybody heard of Gutenberg by chance? All right. So yeah, who am I? I'm a senior WordPress engineer at Digital First Media in Denver. Uh, Denver native, been there my whole life. WordPress developer now for about a decade uh, full time. Love WordPress, open source in general. I created and maintain a, a WordPress plugin, WP GraphQL, which is part of what I'm talking about today. Free and open source if you want to check it out. So uh, back in uh, February, I worked for about three months, February through May, on a government project. I'm not going to talk about the particular government agency, but it was a government project uh, that was moving to WordPress. And at the time, Gutenberg was tentatively going to launch in April uh, of, this, of this year. Um, so we're like, let's go all in on Gutenberg. Let's, let's build the site on Gutenberg uh, so that they're prepared for the future. So first thing we tackled was the home page. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, so we used, Gutenberg has a feature called block templates where you can lock templates. Uh, so you could build blocks, create a template, lock it so that users can't drag and drop the blocks. It's just fixed to what you want it to be. Um, so this example, we had like a home page hero block where they could edit in Gutenberg, but they couldn't drag it and drop it around. It was always the first block. Then we had a recent news block where they could curate news or just have it pull recent news from the post. And then a leadership block where they could uh, highlight leadership of the government agency. Um, so I want to look at uh, just the home page so you could go do this for your own Gutenberg sites if you wanted to. Um, so this is an example of a WYSIWYG, you know, in Gutenberg you can edit. It looks like what you're, what you're working on. Um, and here's the code to do that if you wanted to do it. So on PH this is back in the PHP side of your WordPress theme or plugin. You had a filter, allowed block types. This tells Gutenberg what block types to allow on the given template. So in our case, we're going to filter if the template is home.php, only allow these few post, or these few block types. So in our case, we had homepage hero, curated posts, curated staff. And then you set this property template lock all, and Gutenberg is going to treat it uh, as if it's locked so the user can't drag and drop around. So you can create these fixed templates. So uh, I know there's a lot of hesitation on Gutenberg. Well, maybe people have too much control. So you can kind of take some of that away if you want to. Um, so that's one way to do it. I want to look at one, one small block. This is just a prototype of a block that I built for a production site for the government site. This is just an example of it. It's not the real one. Um, so we had this curated post uh, block um, where they could either toggle between recent posts, and it would just auto pull in three recent posts, or they could search for specific posts, curate them in. Uh, there's a hundred ways to do it. This is one approach. Um, so over on the on the right side, you'll notice the block inspector has three fields. So here, we'll go ahead and add the curated post block. On the right side, I can search for posts, select one, and in real time, you'll see it updates so I can preview what, what this post is going to be. So I just want to walk through how to build a block like this. Um, and one approach that I took for it. So this first part, we have the, this is called the inspector in Gutenberg. You have these inspector controls. And what's happening behind the scenes, you have a block that has these attributes. It's a JavaScript block. This block is going to make an HTTP request to talk to WordPress to get some sort of information. In our case, we're searching for posts. And in response, we want posts to populate the list of potential posts to select. In my case, I'm using plugin Graph, WP GraphQL. Uh, so the block makes a GraphQL request to WordPress, says, hey, I want a list of results of posts matching the keyword that I typed in so that I can populate this select box. GraphQL is obviously, or WP GraphQL is a WordPress plugin, so it's PHP, uses PHP to execute against MySQL, right? Gets you your data, sends it back up to your block, uh, and then Gutenberg has a concept on the block level called set attributes. So I can take uh, the IDs of these posts that I'm selecting in the post picker and uh, set the IDs on my block. And then in real time, my block can uh, re-render those results. So this is an example of a GraphQL query to search posts if you're using WP GraphQL. So I can, uh, nice thing about GraphQL is it's very declarative. You say up front what you want and you'll get a response exactly what you want back. 
Um, so here I can say I want to search posts and I have a variable called keyword that's a string. That's what I'm going to expect as the user types. As they're typing, I send this request. It uses what they've typed as that variable. And then in response, I want the ID of the post, the title of the post, and the date of the post. You can see as I'm typing in the preview, what, I, what is being rendered is the uh, title and the date. So those are the attributes I need back. So I can specify with GraphQL the specific attributes I want back, I get it, and then I can render it in my component. Uh, this is a tool called Graphicol that you can use to uh, you know, debug things with GraphQL. You could test your queries, test mutations, things like that. Um, so GraphQL is similar to REST in that you get J you send an HTTP request to WordPress and you get a JSON response back. Uh, big difference is you, you specify very explicitly up front what you want to have returned. Um, it's not implicit where you just hit an endpoint and get something back. So this is an example of that in action. So I can take this query that specifies what I want from my component. I can go to this tool, test it, make sure it's behaving the way I want it, and then I can go implement it. So then we have another query to render. The, as my content is changing from the post that I pick, I have another query that takes those post IDs, queries data back from WordPress so that I can render my blocks. So this uh, query here takes those IDs that I set for my post picker, tells GraphQL, I want these as my variables, these three IDs or however many IDs are selected. I want to search for posts. And in this case, I can set arguments in GraphQL. I say, I want exactly three posts returned. And then I can filter my GraphQL request. I want post where it matches these IDs that I passed, and I want it ordered by those IDs in ascending order. And in response, I'm going to get that data, and I can render those posts. You'll see this is uh, this dot, dot, dot post fields. That's called the fragment of a query. In React or, or Vue or component-based development, this allows you to write fragments of data that you want from the API and couple it with your component itself. So in this case, we have a, a post card, a card component that renders the post. We have a couple pieces of data we need to render to that component, such as uh, the featured image source URL, the title of the post, the excerpt, and the link of the post. And so when we're building our component, we can specify our data dependencies at the same level as our markup that renders the data. So you don't have to have this like spaghetti code of like trying to figure out in one part of your application how to get the data, how to wire it up together and then prepare it for your component. You can specify right at the component level. Here's what I want. And then as your application grows, let's say we added a new field that we wanted, you can just add it right here to your GraphQL fragment and then you don't have to like search your app and figure out where all this logic to fetch data lives. So we can take a look. Uh, if we we're building this component with a fragment, we need the source URL for a featured image, so now we can render it because we have that data. We need the title and the excerpt, and then we need the link. So GraphQL is going to respond with just that set of data. It's not going to send us the whole post object. It's not going to send us the whole media item object. It's just going to send us these fields that we asked for. Uh, if you have multiple of the same block or even multiple different blocks, GraphQL is this concept of query batching. So uh, where with REST you're going to hit uh, endpoint and endpoint and endpoint. You can't really hit like seven endpoints with one request, easily that I know of at least. Uh, with GraphQL you can send an array of requests and get one H make one HTTP request and get one HTTP response as an array back. So in this case I have two blocks that say, hey, I want to get these curated posts so I can render them. And if we look at the actual request, it's one HTTP request, one response, two different queries, and then my client, my React application can take that data and render it. I think I'm about out of time, so I've got some links to resources, WP GraphQL website, the tool WP Graphical. I use a client tool called Apollo Client, which is a client that uh, talks to GraphQL. Um, GraphQL.org is the main GraphQL spec website. GraphQL is a spec that's been implemented in PHP, Java, Scala, JavaScript, like anything you can think of pretty much. And then for my examples, I use Create Guten Block. Um, I'll also tweet out later, I'll put a repo for the actual block plugin uh, on GitHub under my name, Jason Ball. Uh, thank you.